so good evening everyone welcome to the webinar on higher education opportunities in germany and europe i hope everybody is fine and safe doing well so we have with us the speaker for the like webinar that is ms nikita dedia to briefly introduce nikita madam she is the founder and principal consultant at exponent consultancy services based out of at usa which is specialized in higher education in germany and ma'am is frequently invited pan india to deliver various lectures on this topic the hundreds of students have been benefited till date through her lectures while in, before starting this consultancy ms devya was uh, heading the dasher academy asher at the dart western region she holds the masters in finance degree during one of the lecture at dart she realized that many students needed personal one to one counseling to realize their goals and thus to fill up that gap she founded ecs exponent consultancy services so that students could be handheld and walk through this entire process of getting into germany europe and this is how she is serving the society thank you very much ma'am for agreeing and co consenting to address the webinar and ama members on this relevant topic i hope all the participants will be having a great time for the next one hour followed by the q and a through the chat box with that note thank you very much once again all the participants for joining over to you nikita ma'am thank you very much um, uh, ms radhika and thank you very much uh, uh, mr k k nayar sir who i know since 2004 since my time at the dad which is the german government so it's been a very nice positive and a long association with ama and uh, before we get into any kind of education it's very important to understand what is happening post education because it's about jobs so what is connected to job is the economic scenario to understand that uh, nationally at the national level some of you are probably economic students and you realize that post corona uh, the gdp has slid down making the rupee weaker against the international bar of currency what does that mean for students it means that the relevancy of jobs is lost I mean, there will be lots of students or people who are looking at jobs. That they will get a job, but is it relevant? Question mark. And to grow, it is so said that this is one of the famous jodies in the world. You know, this is the epitome of progress where both have progressed. We know Warren Buffett and Bill Gates. And I introduce here my very favorite animal, sharkfish. Why do I like her? Because she's a ginormous structure with eight feet in stature. But did you know, even for a sharkfish, if you keep her in a little fish pot, she grows only six inches and not the eight feet. Why is that? Because only when we expand our horizons can we grow. So that's exactly the reasons why students study abroad in a foreign country. is to strengthen on their leadership skills and finding new career paths what's a new career path it simply means whatever is in relevance to what the industry requires so my friends whether you go or not or your son or daughter or your associate goes or not 4 lakh plus students are already going abroad each year and it was always said that uh, if you have to go abroad the first country that comes to mind is countries like america canada australia but did you know it is so so expensive to study in such countries and it takes a minimum of 100000 us dollars that's like stepping you back in life by so many lakh of rupees because you will have to repay that kind of amount right and that's one of the reasons just the way a uh, uh, gujarati ways to study at a reasonable price and therefore germany tops the chart and the reasons to consider germany for most is affordable education what is affordable education out of the 427 institutions of higher education 325 
are with up to 100% scholarship. And the rest of the universities are private, but they're much cheaper as compared to a private university in any other country of the world. And the wide variety of courses. I mean, as Indians, we love variety in our food and our clothes. Why not in education? And this is possible uh, to study in Germany. The institutions are world class, very competent faculty. And most importantly, the language, the medium of instruction is English. So if somebody tells you, oh, Germany, you have to study German, right? They are right with their information, but that is from 1991 or before that. Because since 91, uh, everything is in English, especially the international degree programs. Yes, it's great to learn the language, to integrate into the society and things like that. So when you club all of this together, it's an experience of a lifetime, a, a beautiful blend because you'll be there learning so much. And did you know that this is the map of Germany and uh, in the time that it takes to reach from Ahmedabad to Mumbai, in less time than that, you can reach to Utrecht in Netherlands or Paris in France. And you can spend the weekend there and come back on a Monday morning uh, back to your college. Why am I saying that? Because it is something called as a Schengen visa. So you're not just getting a German visa, you're getting something called as a Schengen visa. We talk of visa but it's it's always very great for passionate students to look at groundbreaking uh, to look at inventions that i want to i want to in, invent something and did you know that what what is the success of an invention the success of any invention is that it becomes a household name i got up today morning to brush my teeth well the toothpaste is a german invention i never knew that and there are so many other things that touch our daily life that are from Germany. The Nobel laureates that stem from Germany, the various Nobel laureates in various fields and aspects. And very importantly, that German or Germany, the G Germany is an industrial giant. What does it mean for job purpose? It means that you're, they're hiring uh, not just Indians, but international students, not one or two, but in thousands. And I think that's a great advantage and now that we are all buckled up to study in Germany, let us understand the various facts and figures. There are 427 universities in Germany spanning across 22,000 different courses. And very importantly, there are more than 100 billion euros in various funding that comes at the German university. Now, why is this important? This is important because whatever field you're from, whether you're from English literature, or mechanical engineering or anywhere in between, there is amount for funding and research at the university level. So if you have a great idea, there is a funding to back that. And I think that's really beautiful. And the various facts and figures speak that the German institutions are topping the world charts. However, when all of that is so student friendly, I mean, affordable tuition fees, visa is friendly, jobs are great, um, in, it's an English medium. However, uh, the system there is a little complicated and it's super competitive to get in. I'm here to simplify the whole thing. That first set of universities are the traditional universities, which are 100 plus in number. And they, the focus there is research. So if you incline studying a PhD, you go to a traditional university. But if you're... Um, if you come from an engineering or an applied sciences background where you would love to study but also implement whatever you've learned in your practicum, this is possible at the University of Applied Sciences, um, which offers various courses uh, with hands-on experience, which means that you can have a long-term internship anywhere from two, four, six months th that is part of the course. The only thing here is that you cannot do a PhD. So I'm trying to give you both the pros and the cons because in Germany, there's nothing like good and bad. It really depends on what you wish to do. How does the grading system look like? As Indians, we always like more is better. It's not like that in terms of marks. The more closer you are to one, the better you are. And as you slip down to four, um, you go down. And uh, we just celebrate two days back. We celebrated the world... Um, uh, 
handicap day, special needs day. And this is uh, to tell you that German universities support value for education. What does it mean? It means that not just in terms of accessibility and accommodation, but also in terms of rearranging the study program and making specific academic adjustments is what the German universities do. And so is for hardship applications. But to reduce the misuse of the uh, program, you need official documents from the government. And one of the most important questions that I face is how do you select a university? Well, there are various aspects on which the German universities take pride. And some of them would say, Woo, we have 13 Nobel laureates sitting in our campus. I mean, look at the AHMA campus. It is so beautiful and it is sprawling. Imagine a, a Nobel laureate sitting in there. And that would be the greatest advantage because you would get an easy access to connecting um, to the Nobel laureates to get inputs on your project, your career, and this future path of progress. That helps the students greatly. So some universities will say, hey, we have 13 Nobel laureates. And some would say, we have 56 of them sitting in our campus. And the other universities would say, we have 65 black books. And some other universities will say, we are, uh, flow, we are enrolled close to 150 programs. Now, this is something very, very important to understand because it sprawls across a big uh, avenue, a big number. And now let us understand uh, the bachelor's and the master's program. It's all credit-based program. And uh, the credits at the master's level, uh, bachelor's level are 210, and at the master's level are 120 credit points spanning across uh, four semesters, sometimes three semesters or four semesters. And the greatest advantage is that whatever project you do in your master thesis, you will have that advantage to speak it out. I mean, Mr. Nair always says the people who come here are all very brilliant and excellent. Now imagine uh, as a brilliant person, your mind is working faster than your hand. So you get an opportunity to speak in front of the academic jury and not write it down. Just the way there are so many options at the master's level, you can also pursue a PhD in various ways. One is the individual doctoral programs. And the second is the structured doctoral program. So what happens at the individual one? Well, it's the traditional method where you register under somebody and that professor based on his gender is called a doctor father or a doctor mother. And a structured doctoral program are 600 in number and you earn close to 35 lakh of rupees to study such a PhD program. Now, this is something very, very um, important uh, because you are receiving the money to study there and that too to the tune of 35 lakh rupees. Now, all of this information that I'm bringing to you is not found on the net. You can study, uh, do a PhD in the industry, which means you have gone for your master's, taken a degree uh, there, but you've also maintained contact with your professor. So if your professor agrees to establish that particular degree um, as a PhD thesis, then you can uh, work, earn your salary, but also you can go ahead and be uh, registered for your PhD and work for your PhD. And I think that's really great. Now, many people ask, uh, oh, in Germany, you can only study mechanical engineering or automobile engineering. It's not like that. You can study, at, I mean, all kinds of various fields from applied math to business and engineering to mechatronics to agribusiness, to bioengineering, to robotics, to print media technology or health informatics. You think of it and there is a program there, whether it is at the bachelor's level or at the master's level, from English to metallurgy, and from industry 4.0 subjects to business administration. So there are various, various options in, in, um, at the German universities. Now, friends, what I'm going to do is I'm going to run through some fields and I'm going to give you the highlights of those fields. And um, the traditional fields that we always hear and see are there. But what I'm going to speak about is the very unique fields that exist. And you can study that in Germany. And now you will see that I'm not promoting any one university. I'm here uh, for a very moral connection that AMA is doing such a wonderful work. 
And I'm not speaking about just A, B, or C university that I send you there and I will get a fat commission. No, we are here, Ama, Mr. Nair, Ms. Radhika, me. We are all here for your benefit. Uh, and we're giving you all the options that are available, that will be available for your best interest, okay? So we begin with the field of engineering. You can study as unique field as neural engineering. Neural engineering has not yet started in India, but it is there in Germany. It is the engineering and the mapping of your mind on the engineering level. You can study space engineering. You can study aeronautical and space applications. And now is a trend when you are studying a particular um, subject for a designated field, like media informatics or um, uh, digital engineering. I mean, who we, in India, we generally think of IT or computer science, but there's digital engineering, there's water engineering, power, uh, financial engineering. And do you know the heart of any transportation system is the railways? Um, I love traveling with the train. So there is railways engineering, and that is, uh, India is very networked with the trains, and so is Germany. And some trains you might find at the speed of 400 or 500 kilometers an hour. And that's, and that's really nice. And there's so little competition right now in this field. So if you pick this up right now, you will be the sought after person. Uh, solar engineering, mining engineering, usability engineering, hydro science and engineering, nanotechnology, nano biophysics. So all of such fields are possible. And in the field of electronics and communications, you can study unique fields like green electronics or organic and molecular electronics, communication in, um, engineering, or within computer sciences, you can be studying applied computer science or computer science with a focus on big data. Now in India, you will hear data sciences, but uh, big data has yet not entered um, India, but that's possible in Germany. Why am I speaking about all of these fields like human computer interaction? These are such unique fields that you, even you would not have thought of that something like this exists. But yes, it does exist. And you can take advantage of that by studying and becoming, becoming an exponent in your own field. Information technology or media technology for that matter. There are uh, so many programs in mechanical um, engineering and related. Now for a common world, people will say mechanical engineering, but as a mean, there are so many different super specializations that one can study. Uh, you already are working at a specialization. What I'm talking about is super specialization, something like robotic systems engineering or mechatronics and robotics. We've had a student, she's registered with us for bionics. So a field like bionics, I mean, she is a 98 percentile student. She's from Baroda. And um, I was in Mumbai. She came to meet me in Mumbai early this year before lockdown. And she said, engineering medicine And we offered her a unique blend of new program. And she's studying, uh, she's almost on the verge of her application. And she'll be doing that. Then there is artificial intelligence or data sciences or machine learning, machine learning and technology enhanced education or data sciences. There are so many options within data sciences that one can study for. Uh, automobile engineering, like automobile and mechanical engineering, or CAD CAM, uh, which is a specialization within automobile engineering. You can even study plastics engineering and mechanical engineering. Now, there are a lot of uh, civil and structural engineering in uh, Ahmedabad, and some of the very fine uh, institutions are in Ahmedabad. But did you know that if you can study as offbeat fields like geohazards or natural hazards and risks, you, uh, you cut through the competition, and that's when people will come after uh, you to take your expertise and your guidance. So there is focus also on the di digital building infrastructure or you can study robotics and construction, various fields in chemical technology like bioprocess engineering, but even a small subject like protein chemistry, you can go ahead and study that as a whole master's program. Nanosciences, the whole reliance began with the success of polymer sciences. And that is the base, the fundamental of material sciences. But when they started, it was not that famous. 
So this is exactly what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to introduce to you peers that the world will know in the next 10, 20, 30 years. And that you can study right now, like nanosciences or computational mechanics of materials and structures. And I think that's a great idea. And now we come to a very interesting segment. It's called engineering management. What is that? That means you're an engineer, but looking after other engineers and managing them. That is called resource optimization. The world is in need of such technical managers or engineering managers, and you can go ahead and study that. You can also study uh, various different kinds of MBAs like energy management or even an MBA in wine and sales management uh, or international finance and investments or something like business admin and entrepreneurship, consumer affairs, uh, marketing, entrepreneurship, and so on. A very beautiful field I would like to introduce to you is something called a small enterprise promotion and training uh, set. Um, as part of my program, uh, one of the very important is to uh, uh, invite and host various political, German political uh, delegations that come from Germany and Europe. And anytime there is a political delegation, there's always a business delegation that accompanies along with them. Now, what's, what is very important and interesting is that you talk to them and they will say they're really small and medium. And I would be surprised that they are so big and they call themselves small. And that is, that is the thing that small and medium enterprises anywhere from 50 rupees up to 500 crores is still considered small and medium. And did you know the world economics relies on small and medium enterprise, 80 to 90% whether it's in India, America, Germany, Brazil, uh, Japan. And that's where the success of any economy lies. So you can be studying that or global management. And little bit people know that um, we can even study biotechnology and pharmacy um, in Germany with very unique options like pharmaceutical biotechnology or pharmacoeconomics. And we, we are having a lot of students from pharmacy and biotechnology that are registered with us. Renewable energy. Uh, renewable energy, sun is in abundance today in India. Sometimes it gets so sunny in Ahmedabad that we don't go out in the afternoon. Why? Because it's so sunny. But as a smart person, one would think of how to put advantage of the free sun that is available. You will know that now there are solar farms that are coming along that entire belt or the outskirts of um, Gujarat, you know, in the remote villages. Why? Because there are so much options in renewable energy. And uh, we, uh, last week, we had two uh, friends who have, who are coming from the field of uh, mechanical engineering, but have registered with us for, in the field of waste management. Waste management, who talks about waste? A dirty, discarded thing like waste. But did you know it's big business? I mean, they are so hygiene conscious right now. And everything is getting into waste management, like bio waste, um, industrial waste, medical waste, so much. And it's a big business. So they're going to study that, become experts in that, and then start that up. So whatever field you are from, there are various options to study in that. Uh, and now I'm going to quickly run through the other fields. But just so that you know, as my wonderful audience, that there are various aspects in each of the titles that you can see, whether it's math, whether it's physics, it's biology, food technology. We love food. Ahmedabad is the hub of food. But do you know that food is a big business? Yes, it is. There are some streets in Ahmedabad, without naming them, they all start at 8, 9, or even 10 p.m. in the night. You know where they are. This is to let you know that if you actually studied food business and consumer studies, you will be the pioneer which connects to all of such people and you will be getting their business to manage them. Uh, nutrition and health sciences and so on. Ahmedabad or Gujarat is also a hub for textiles. Uh, quality material, but also variety in material. Become an expert in that and you are the next best person to be sought after. You can be studying merge technologies for resource efficiency or textile trade and technology and so much more. 
architecture. Architecture is so varied. Little did we know that you can be studying landscape architecture or green space management, uh, urban design or media architecture. And there is so much to study in and including subjects like psychology or English literature, medicine, medical informatics or biomedical neurosciences or medical biometry. So these are the various all subjects that one can study. And the kind of universities that we like to propose for our students are either universities which have an excellence initiative, which means a lot of funding, or universities which have a, a chair at various other leading organizations, an internship chair, or universities which have uh, live and hands-on experience uh, in various, uh, from various corporates, or some universities which offer more than 280 programs. I mean, so two best friends can go for two different fields and still be in the same city. Or universities which have American-Asian partnership and so much more. Now that we got so interested and intrigued in our field of interest, let us understand the university highlights. What does it look like of the German education system? There is decentralization, which means um, opposite of uh, what is in India. An engineering, to give you an example, if an engineering student, his first choice will be to get into Andhra, uh, not Andhra, but IIT. In the IIT, he will then think, shall I take up IIT Kharagpur or IIT Midras, IIT Ruki? If a student is from management, he or she will first think of getting into um, IIM. And whether it's IIM Calcutta or Ahmedabad and so on. So we are looking at the first best and then the second best. But this is not the case in Germany. You're looking at an equal another opportunity at a different university. 12 plus 3 from India is recognized and accepted. So if you're from BCom, BA, BSc, you are accepted. You don't need to give the mandatory 13th year. What kind of exams do you need to give? You need to give exams like TOEFL, IELTS, Cambridge um, on one hand, but because of decentralization, you never know which exam is required at which step. And the other exams like GRE and GMAT, it's not mandatory. There's no mandate or rule. It all really depends on the courses and the kind the ingredients that go into the courses. So let's say somebody studying quantitative finance, which is very statistical in nature, then yes, a GRE might be asked from that student. And it's important for us to know what does it cost to live there. Now, this figure is not brought in by me or Ms. Radhika or Mr. Nair. This is issued by the German government. So it's very important for us to bring in just the latest information that. It is 853 euros that the German government anticipates for your cost of living in Germany. This is an upper hand figure and to uh, understand the German perfection, it's not 850 or 855, it's 853. And it is bifurcated in these fields. So this is extremely important to understand that uh, whether, um, you know, that uh, so much is for your rent, so much is to wear a brand new tone jeans or new Bollywood movie and things like that. Now comes a very important factor, which is visa. And there are so many movies made on visa, literally in Hindi, in Gujarati, and of course in English as well. You know, if you're not an international threat, visa is not an issue for you. So what do you need? You need a passport, you need three passport size pictures, but most importantly, what you need is your letter of admission and the cost of living document. So the 853 that we saw, so 853 into 12 is 10,236 euros in equivalence of Indian rupees. This is your money for you to have in your own bank account, which is called a blocked account, which has to be shown to the students so that they are not found on the streets in a compromised situation. That's all they need. They do not need to see how much family land uh, your family owns or how much jewelry your mom owns. And Germany is one of the only countries in the world which doesn't ask for all of this. 
you know, to fly from even a neighboring country like Dubai or Singapore or Sri Lanka, you will have to show everything. And that visa officer from the other side of that a glass door will say, oh, he will look at it, all of your documents. Is that really good? Is that nice? Question mark. Germany respects you and they say we only need to see this. And the next question that I get asked the most is, can I work? You know, I will tell you, <clears throat> it's more important to ask, can I earn when I work? Because everybody is asking, can I work? Can I work? That's not important. So just the way I gave you a comparative analysis between um, America, Canada, Australia, and Germany, I'm now giving you a comparative analysis between the countries of Europe. There are countries like uh, Italy and such, wherein um, even at the public university, you have to pay a big amount of money. And uh, when you have to work, you can work, but the companies are not supposed to pay you. But the case with Germany is that you can work, but you can also earn. How much can you earn and how much can you work? You can work for up to eight months in a year and you can earn up to 11.26 lakh of rupees, which is tax free. Yes, my friends. And the taxes are the highest in Germany, close to 50, 60%. How many of you are paying full taxes? Question mark. But just imagine all of this income is officially tax-free income if you stay within the 240 half-day guideline. And the respect that Indians get at German universities, if you see, look, these are the campaign logos of German universities, and there is one Indian at each um, segment and uh, they are respected and that is why the number is increasing and it's not just uh, at the student level my organization that i worked for dad has a presence in 173 countries i was the first non-german to be ahead at the dad and now it is mr jagratu mukherjee who is the head of dad worldwide so dad at 173 countries of the world I think that is a big achievement that Indians are having. And Mr. Premal Desai, who is the chairman of Chisholm Group. If you know, Chisholm Group makes elevators and such products. And um, being a head of such uh, representation is a very really proud moment. So, my friends, you can go to Germany, study there. And what are the options that you have? You can work there, so study and work there. Or study there, come back here in India and work here because there are more than 7,500 German companies having a presence in India. And 10,000 are more to come up. Two, three, there is also a possibility where you can join your family business or do a startup of your own. We are all business-minded people and it's a great idea to do a startup. And there is a huge amount of funding in that. So that is possible. Now, uh, you must be wondering that um, what different do we do other than the government when I was there before? So when I was working at the government, at the, uh, the German government, the DAD, we were trained only to give one website and that was about it, not so much information. And uh, it becomes very difficult to comprehend so much information, especially now that the competition is increasing so much at the German university level. So there is huge amount of competition at the German university level. And that is where we come in to bridge you, to bring you from here to Germany. Once you're there, you will flourish and you will, you will really grow exponentially. Now, what do we do? We are really interested in your personal growth. So um, we look at the amount of information that you have in the webinar. We will even take up question answer session. And there is even a personal counseling that we will do. But over and above that, there are six phases that um, we work. Once you have decided to go to Germany and to register with us, we have divided the work in six phases. It, it takes up to eight to nine or 10 months to work on each and every student and there are international experts that are working on them. Um, so first is the research phase. We need to understand what you've done and what you wish doing. A. Uh, B, we want to understand your career goals. So we will do backward integration, backward engineering, 
and we will uh, we that will help us plot the list of diligently matched universities. You've heard it right. There are twenty two thousand different programs, right? So everything is not applicable for you. So only the best relevant that is applicable for you is very, very important and has to be found out. You see, I love wearing pearls or you might be wearing gold or something like that. Do we actually go to the gold pine or go under the sea to find the pearls? No, we don't do that. Uh, it's risky and it's fatal. We allow somebody to do that. And that's exactly what we do. We have research divers who go deep, uh, into things which are not even available on the internet and they find the diligently matched university. So we plot something called as a university program, highlights of that program and everything that's required. But even before we send you that list, what we do is the Kundali check of the university. Why? To ensure that these are internationally recognized degrees. Very important. Then thirdly, we give you a free hand to shortlist the relevant programs. That's very important. And now comes a very important phase, which is the document preparation. What does it mean? It means, okay, let us say the university needs five documents. On an average, they need five documents. We'll say, oh, they need a resume. I have a resume that is a copy paste from my friend. Or I went on Google and I found something. Or uh, there is something called a letter of intent, statement of purpose, uh, letters of recommendation, and so on. And what happens with letters of recommendation? You go running up to your professor and you say, sir, I need an LOR. The sir will, <clears throat> they are so busy, they'll say, and they are billing, and they will say that, okay, go get a draft and I'll sign it. What do you do? You go to somebody called as Google Baba, and you think you're the only one who knows Google Baba. Well, all of those things, now when they go to Germany, with the latest technology, there's something called as plagiarism check. And it all goes in the trash. Everything goes in trash. And that's something, and then you wonder, Marika said, but that document said, why did I get rejected? And there are increasing instances of people having 94 percentile, 94.5, 95.1 percentile being rejected. This is because the relevancy of the documents is not there. A, B, the quality, the highest quality of documents are not there. On each seat, there are at least four, five, six hundred students that are applying. Why will they select you? So this is where our editorial team comes into picture. They sit in Germany and they actually revamp all your documents in connection to what the university needs. And uh, we are very blessed uh, to have this international team to maintain the highest quality standards for our students. And we also do uh, for PhD students and postdoc students for the research proposal because that's where the fund, they will get so much funding. Then once you get, uh, let's say, admission uh, letters from two or three universities, we'll even do the pros and cons. Where should you be? Uh, where, where would it be better? Because you have to be married to one university to apply for your visa. Yes, and then we even groom you for the visa interview because there's nothing happening in Ahmedabad. You will all have to be going to Mumbai. You come under the Mumbai jurisdiction. And the visa officer has been a very good professional friend of mine. So we groom you for the visa interview. And last but not the least, we even do the intercultural training for you. What does it mean? It means that, uh, let's say your parents said, should we take the roti maker or not? So we even um, uh, talk about all of that, but at that level. So from A until Z is everything that we do for you. And in a nutshell, if I can tell you what we do, anybody has a pet mouse, hmm, madam, I have a pet dog or a cat who talks of mouse. And even if there's a mouse on the road, I walk from the other side of the road. Well, now imagine if this guy comes to Andama. Everybody will be sitting and standing there taking selfies with him. Um, now imagine the ingredient is the same. What is the difference? This guy we don't even look at. And he is the same, but this guy is into a commanding position. And he's a trillion dollar industry. You go to Disneyland, everything is Mickey Mouse. Mickey Mouse uh, water bottle, hats, t-shirts, uh, Mickey Mouse underwear, everything. So what we do in nutshell is we transform normal personalities into world-class uh, people. And this is our work. And we take great pride in the quality of our work. And here is a testimonial of a gentleman who has studied in uh, Germany. He is also from Gujarat. He lives in a little ashram called Muni Seva Ashram in Baroda. 
and let us hear from him what he has to say. testimony of another gentleman from a younger generation who uh, stood first in the entire Mumbai University and he got a direct admission from IIT. He rejected IIT to join IISC uh, Bangalore for his research. He went ahead to join um, Cornell University for his PhD and then got selected into the very prestigious Max Planck Fellowships from Germany. So the father of all scholarships are the Max Planck Fellowships from Germany. So let's hear from him what he has to say. Uh, Ma'am, sorry to interrupt, but we are not able to hear the volume. Doesn't matter. So uh, I'll pause it if you cannot hear. He's just trying to say that when he, he attributes his success to his stint in Germany and how it has helped him because he studied and worked in the most important countries of the world, Germany, India, and America, and how uh, being in Germany has helped to his success. Okay. And now, this is just a small glimpse of our students who are coming from various different fields, whether it's peace and conflict studies, to safety scientists, to bioinformatics, and also a small glimpse of students, of the many students that went even in this semester in spite of COVID and Corona. So everything is back to normalcy in Germany. And we're especially proud of our uh, student, uh, Parine, who uh, came from a very uh, medium grade background and every time his visa would be rejected when he registered with us we were uh, we were able to place him in one of the finest university in Germany with one semester in Harvard my friends even if you get a two-day seminar to attend at Harvard you will put that in gold and italics in your resume we put him in entire one semester in Harvard in spite of him coming through very, very lower medium grades. So this is the kind um, of quality of work that we are doing. And a very shy guy, but very interested in um, progressing for himself. We got him placed at the best university in Germany. And now he's even registered for his PhD at uh, under a Nobel laureate and a girl who would otherwise not look at him as proposed to him. So personal benefits to studying in Germany and the various uh, universities that invite me 
to deliver um, and uh, various universities across India, Padma Bhushan uh, institutions that are started by Padma Bhushan founders uh, in different parts of India, some universities even uh, uh, take me up as an advisor. This, this is at the FIKI meeting in Gujarat in Ahmedabad. And uh, here you can see Piyush Desai, who's, um, who is one of the uh, patrons of AMA and uh, Raji Vastupalji and so on and so forth. So uh, a lot of universities do an MOU with us and uh, I brought a lot of delegations. This is at one of my AMA presentations a uh, couple some time back. And uh, various important people from different organizations who, um, who take my advice to guide their employees and their children. The famous Shimaru group, you know, who are buying the movie rights. Raman Maru is a very big producer. They invite me. Piyush Desai from Ahmedabad itself, from Balpati Chai. Or Mahesh Shetty of the Mahesh Tutorials, who has a presence in more than 116 uh, cities in India. So all of that, under the kind of work that I'm doing, I got bestowed upon with the leadership award in America year before last. And ma, I'm a social entrepreneur, so I love giving back to the society. This is in a rural village in Gujarat, uh, my hometown, where I had brought in a lot of German funding and uh, channelized at various different organizations. And as we come towards the end of the presentation, uh, last bits of information that once you've studied in Germany, you can stay for one and a half year longer in Germany just to find a job. And you can find jobs at various organizations that are hiring in thousands. So whether it's SAP, Audi, Bosch, Siemens, and these are all German organizations that are hiring students in thousands. So uh, whether it's Rittersport, this is just a glimpse of all these 7,500 uh, companies. And last week, there was a new introduction uh, by Elon Musk from Tesla. Uh, he's putting up a plant in Berlin and he says that I will be hiring 12,000 grad uh, engineers from Germany. So you can study in Germany and work for America. So all of that is possible. And now the bottom line, the most important point is that Germany is an accessible market. Uh, please look at that. It is for great fields like engineering, IT, but also for various other options like commerce, science, English is the medium of instruction. The fees are affordable. Visa is hassle-free. And the way we can help you is carve a niche for yourself, steering you to the myriad of possibilities, help select the best institution for you based on your background qualification and career aspiration, help you exponentially grow and have a very satisfying career. And we'll have a question answer session, but for future, uh, if you have questions, take a photo of this slide. It's, it says queries at exponentconsultants.com. You're most welcome to write in to us with your academic resume and list of questions. So please um, send, uh, send us your um, email if you wish more details. And this is the feedback form. Take a picture. Uh, Ms. Radhika, can you uh, copy this link and send it to everybody, ma'am? So uh, take a picture of this. I'll give you 10 seconds and the feedback is mandatory. Please put in your feedback. Uh, okay, I was just I'm not able to access the screen, ma'am, but uh, one second. Just take a photo. Just take a photo of it. The, there is a barcode to it and the barcode will directly take you to the link. Right? So I'll give you 10 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And take a photo of this as well. Wonderful. Uh, I hope the presentation was useful. Shall we roll out the question answer session, uh, Ms. Radhika and Mr. Nair? Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Nikita, ma'am. It was indeed a very eye-opening session for the people regarding uh, opportunities, new opportunities in uh, Germany and uh, U Europe. And uh, participants, any queries you would like to post, you would like to ask, you please, yeah. We have the first question coming up in the chat box, ma'am. 
Yeah, Rusha Patel, what is the proficiency level that you need in German language? Uh, so it, we promote only English medium programs uh, because once you step out of India internationally, your mother tongue is English. Uh, so it's important that you, it's good for you that you study in English medium programs. So if the program is in English, a very basic level is fine for you to study. Any other question? Mm, uh, Ma'am, I see there are no questions popping up. Let me just check the YouTube. Sure. Workspace and study spaces in English. So um, what you're doing is you're just learning um, German for your personal reasons. Vikas Singhal is asking, how can we look for scholarships? Uh, Vikas, scholarships are not in a shop that they are distributing it. It is applicable to a student and it has to be relevant for a student. I don't know what field you come from, uh, what are your grades, if you want, we can do a free professional evaluation for your uh, profile. So because you're welcome to send us an email um, with your academic resume and list of questions, and we can, we can see if you're even eligible for that. Divyang, what is the expense of two years overall? Uh, so cost of living will be mandatory, which is 10,236 euros, uh, Divyang. Um, convert that into Indian rupees. So this is something called as a blocked account. It is your money for you to use when you will be in Germany. But once you're in Germany, you can even earn for the second year. So that is something that would be required. And then based on the university you go to, will the expenses be calculated. Because of the system of decentralization, we can only know what universities are applicable for you in phase three. Uh, Ma'am, one question from uh, YouTube that is uh, currently the student is doing bachelor in travel and tourism. Do they have masters there on the same? Which field? Travel and tourism? Yeah, ma'am. Yes. Like any universities or any... You are yes, like they do. Yes, they do. Uh, he's most welcome to send us his uh, uh, specific, sea travel and tourism is also a very broader field. You know, there are so many super specializations within that. So if he can send us um, his resume to queries at exponentconsultants.com, we will be able to uh, give him an idea as to what kind of options he can look at and, uh, you know, what could be the subject specializations within that field. Yeah, thank you very much, ma'am. That was very kind enough of you of sharing this email ID so that even after the webinar, they will be in touch with you so that they can have any yes. queries, any doubts yes. regarding this thing, they will approach you directly. So, Mr. Nair is wonderful, Ms. Radhika is also wonderful. So, they are there to support you and we are here to guide you. Yeah, so and feel free yeah, to reach out. Thank, thank you very much, ma'am. Thank you very much. And uh, yeah, participants, you can, uh, if in, in any queries, you can always contact ma'am on her, the mail ID, which is mentioned on the screen. Even if you are not able to find that, you can send an email to AMA, which we will forward it to ma'am, and she will respond to you immediately at, and assist you for further guidance and everything. Yeah, we have a whole team and whatever email you send is getting replied in one business day. So yeah. uh, whatever you write will be promptly replied to. Thank you. Thank you very much, ma'am. So with that, I think there are no further questions more. So Perfect. we'll end the session here, ma'am. But thank you very much once again. And thank you all participants. Can you for... click a picture? Can you, uh, Ms. Radhika, can you just I, take a picture of the I'll take snapshot? a screenshot of it, yeah. Of the participants and you. Yeah. Uh, Thank you, Divyan. Thanks for thanking me. Thank you, uh, Vikas Singhal. Thanks. I appreciate that you enjoyed uh, and you liked the presentation. It was a lot of efforts that we put in to get all of this information for you. So thank you, uh, thank Mr. Nayo and Ms. Radhika, who were the bridges to bring this across 
uh, to you who are a bridge. So a big round of applause to Mr. Uh, Nayur and Ms. Radhika. You're doing a great job uh, for being the bridge, for being a catalyst for progress and success. And it's not just today, you've been dedicatedly doing this day after day, year after year, and you're dedicated your time and efforts to the benefit of the society. So a big round of applause to Ms. Radhika and Mr. Nair, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, ma'am. Thank you. And Thank you, the, the way you handled the questions, that was also nice. Thank you for that. And uh, we look forward once again for your wonderful webinar once again next time. Thank you. Sure. Take care of yourself, ma'am. Everybody. Sure, sure. Yeah. Take the pictures and email it to me. Yeah, ma'am. Yeah, ma'am. And I see some people who have opened up their screens. I see Mr. Divyan Patel and if any, anybody else wants to show their face so that I see that you're not robots and human beings coming to me. <laughs> Just the way you can see me. <laughs> I will keep going. Okay. Okay, then. Yeah. If, if people can see, we still have two minutes, five minutes. Yeah, yeah. If you can all, those who are there, you can please, if you can put on your videos. Yeah. You all saw me. I need to see you. Okay. No volunteers. Let's see if there are volunteers. We have Sanjeet. We have Rusha. We have OnePlus Nord. We have Vikas Ji. Uh, who else is there? Um, Divya, Raja. Yeah, and there are so many on YouTube, right? So it's it's oh, it's very very interesting to always connect. Um, appreciate it. So wonderful. Thank you very much, and uh, have a great evening ahead. Bye-bye. Bye, ma'am. Bye, everyone. Take care of yourself. Bye. Good night. Have a nice weekend.